I'm sure you're full of this one at the moment, is how can we solve the planet from global warming? So what we're going to do is Chris is going to come up, he's going to give his talk, and then he's going to turn around and we're going to ask everybody whether we are persuaded by what he's talk spoken about. Questions so, first. Oh yes, we do. We have questions first. Thank you very much, Chris. We've only just started doing these this year. So we have questions first. So your targeted time is nine minutes. And the timings are on my phone, hold on. Let's have a look. 789, thank you very much. Yes, they're there on my little sheet. Is it off? Is it off at nine? Off at all at nine off. and off at half past. Off at oh, we're all stretching it a bit tonight, aren't we? Look. <laughs> so off at half past. Fantastic. So Chris, come up and give us your prescription speech on how can we Solve the planet from global warming. Global warming doesn't do anything by eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Right, so we're going. Madam Chair, members and guests, how can I? do anything about global warming. I'm quite sure you've heard all the media slants on everything. Jan Jan it's not no longer January, it is now Vegan Alley. The rise of vegans is coming up in the UK. It is now believed to be 5% of the population. And in case for those mathematicians who are not in the room, that's 3.5 million people deciding it is a way of helping the planet absorb some more carbon. But if you think that's good, the reality is actually 600,000. In Sweden, it's about 10% population. In Australia it's 12%. But one country is way out at 31%. Can you imagine which country that might be? India. 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 The Indians are at 31%. And it's backed by a lot of scientists saying that this is the way we can start absorbing more carbon out of the atmosphere. We've heard a lot about deforestation. The Amazon being cut down to make way for palm oil, for cattle farming. And the devastation which is happening in that part of the world is horrendous. We also look on the news, the fires in Australia. Do you know, and if you take the area that Australia has burnt, that is everything south of the M4, if it was in the UK. It's a massive area, all releasing carbon off into the atmosphere. When we haven't even started on plastic or chemical. But I want to introduce a new word to you, and it's called, let me just get this right, because it's quite a tricky word to do, it's called desertification. Deserts. Desertification means the deserts are growing. You've heard about the Sahara getting bigger every year. But here in the UK, we have the same problem. The onslaught of houses, concrete and tarmac are creating great areas of desertification. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't just stop there. We get more soil compaction by using heavy tractors. And also, you know, we get lots more life being driven out because of these large areas. 
So now you're going to wonder, what are the solutions? And you can't get away from the fact that every human being expels one kilogram of carbon into the atmosphere every single day. So there is an obvious solution there, but it's not allowed. <laughs> so, what can we look at? The forests are great. A 10-year-old ten forest will absorb a large amount of carbon. But unfortunately, we don't have 10 years. We have to react now. And the only way I can see it happening is via grassland. Now, when you look out of the window and you see that grassy area, everything you see which is green will be dead in April. Let me explain a little bit more. I spent three years studying grassland. I'm sad, I know I <laughs> But this is the fundamental of what will get us out of the problem we're in at the moment. <coughs> when we look out and we see that green grass, the leaves on that plant will fall and they will decompose and release the carbon into the soil, into, into the atmosphere. The only way you trap the carbon is to get an animal to eat it. And this goes back to nature. Because what nature does is have these large rumorbites roaming plains, eating the grass, and then they defecate on it. Then they move on. What does that mean for the plant? The grass will get the nutrition, the worms will bring the, the muck down into the soil, break it all down, lock that carbon up, and that allows the plant, the grass, the simple grass grow. It absorbs more carbon and then the animals will come along and eat it all. The interesting part is that actually the grass will absorb 370 kilos of carbon so that will support 1,000 people per, per day. And the wood, the 10-year-old wood, would do the same. So are we overlooking the simple solution? So for me, I mean, I do believe that Greta Thunberg is an interesting character. But the one thing she's very sure about is we don't have a lot of time. We need to get some action. And I'm reminded of uh, Anita Roddick. Do you remember Anita Roddick from The Body Shop? Saying, if you think you're insignificant, try and go to sleep with a mosquito inside your mosquito net when you're trying to go to sleep. Every one of us can make a difference if we decide to do something which is worthwhile. So, what the important thing is is about muck. How do we use that muck? How do we incorporate it into the soil? And there's some interesting thoughts. Because does anybody here know about rewilding? Okay, this is an interesting thing. It's where they take a large area of ground. Large might be difficult in the UK, but the largest area, and you put livestock in there. You fence round the outside, just put the livestock. So there's no segregation. The cows, the sheep, the pigs, the deer, are all just left in there. They are looked after by somebody who thinks they know what they're doing. And they will sort themselves out. This idea that the animal will graze a certain area <coughs> defecate on it and then move on. The pig will dig up the woodlands, making more way for more grasslands. This will help, overall, trap the carbon in. The people looking after would take and keep the balance 
of animals somewhere near right. They would need to extract some and to, to maintain the balance. But in that area, it would trap carbon quickly. So what I would like to do is to suggest to you that actually having a balanced diet is really important. Possibly eating a little bit less might be better. But the most important thing is to source good quality food locally. And that's the way we can solve the global climate. Dramatic. Yeah. 
it isn't alarming people to know that the, the deserts are creeping outwards big time and it's because of what we're doing we're controlling animals, we're not allowing that organic matter to go back in the soil. Mm. I have a question as well. I'm so curious. No, you're not allowed to use that. Yeah. <laughs> you can <say. laughs> um, So, interestingly, when you travel into Wales, now I thought you were going to be the wrong bringing up sheep, and actually it's me now, the sheep are roaming free. Mm -hmm. There's cattle grids everywhere, and you know as soon as you drive into Wales to look out for sheep wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So, is the grass different in Wales to England? The grass will absorb more in, yeah. in Wales, yeah. but it's not about one species. Okay. So it's not about covering the world in sheep because we like sheep. <laughs> it, is, it is about you having. You don't say sheep there as well. <coughs> it's, it's about having a mixture of species. So you should be having pigs in the right area. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't be protecting the woodland because the pigs have an important area to be in there and then they'll come out and will graze the grass but will tend to dig it up a bit. That will start regeneration. They, they would be after the worms, so if the, if the grazing animals have come round and done a lot of poo in, in this area, of course the pigs would be attracted to that to get after the worms, that would lift the soil up, that would cause reseeding. Reseeding would naturally be done by the pigs. So, so it's not about using one solution, it's about having multiple uh, solutions which nature will naturally provide. And what do you do about the people who complain that the value of their house has dropped? There's a load of pigs in the wood at <laughs> the back of their garden. I, I just you always get that, you know, where people just I, I, worry I, about those sort of things. If, if they're worrying about it, that's great news that they do worry about the value of their house. But let them be blessed that they have got a house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a bit more about being grateful rather than, mm. you know, going, I'm losing out because. But that's a personal view rather than, mm -hmm. if we want to save this planet, and let's face it, we've only got one, we know of, that we can live on. We need to do something, or I need to do something, and if I need to do something, what can I do? Okay, so your ending kind of statement was to buy more locally. Yeah. Um, so is that what you are looking to persuade people to have done? I, by the I, I would, yes. I would ask them to moderate their thing <coughs> and not go to Sainsbury's and much rather than go to a local farm and to get local food. Okay, right, so there you go and uh, you turn your back. Cool. You've got something for you. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is obviously you know the, the thing that Chris was looking to persuade you on and by a show of hands I want to know if you have been persuaded by this talk on the thing that Chris mentioned there. So would you like to show your hands if you have been persuaded to buy more local? Okay, right, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a half? <laughs> okay, great, thank you very much. Okay, great. So it wasn't unanimous, I have to say. You no. still have the work to do in the break. However, <laughs> you did persuade a majority of the room uh, with that talk. But I would say thank you very much. It was very interesting. I'm sure everyone's desperate to know what you.